All right. One of the original cast members of Mad TV also enjoyed his work in How I Met Your Mother, The Goldbergs, and so much more movies like Bad Santa and The Hangover, Old School. His new stand-up special available now on the Comedy Dynamics Network, Complicated Apes, and his highly popular Fighter and the Kid podcast alongside Brendan Schaub, all about UFC and more. Good to see you, Brian Callen. How are you, Brian? Good to be here, sir. Good to have you in here. This spacious, wonderful, you know, fake office. Exp- I love it. It's exp- a man office. You can explore the studio space here. I know. I, I'm I'm uh, I'm a lucky man. Yeah. Uh, good to have you here, man. Uh, where do we start um, with you here? Let's let's start with the UFC. What what the hell happened with Conor McGregor? Best you can tell. Think, what is going to happen? I, I with him? think that a guy like that, he did it right. He he took the belt in two different weight classes. But you get when you get that rich, mm-hmm. it's very hard, I think, to then decide that you're going to train on the level that you did train. And you got to remember, these guys are not just training that way. They're sucking weight. They're, take, they're dealing with injuries all the time. And then you get in with a monster like Khabib. You have to be so hungry. There's so many people coming after you. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult to motivate when you have $100 million. Maybe after he's been fighting, what, since he was 17? And you, you made it. You did it. You're at the top of the mountain. And when you like that view, it's very hard to come back down and just grind like that. To his credit, to that guy's credit, he fights anybody. I couldn't believe he was going to fight Khabib. I couldn't believe it. I was like, dude, come up with any excuse, please. That guy is a nightmare. If he touches you, that's it. They, they, he, that, that his level of wrestling is so crazy. The minute he closes the gap and grabs you, you're not going anywhere. You, I have a track record of that. Those Dagestanis, they grow up wrestling at the age of three. In Azerbaijan, that whole area. And not wrestling humans either. No, sir. You they wrestle? Wrestle, they'll, they'll wrestle bears, okay? <laughs> and they fight. They fight. I mean, it's just, it's in, it's it, part of their, the geography of where they're from. They were dealing with the Turks, with the Russians, with everybody else. They had to fight their whole life. And you, you, I was like, you can't, please don't fight. You're not a wrestler on that level. You can't solve that problem. There's no way to solve that problem. Well, I just wonder where to go from here. Now, you know, obviously, what is it? The strong arm felony? Is that what it was called down yeah. in uh, Miami? Yeah, yeah. strong arm robbery. Strong That's arm just, robbery. Yeah. It's a felony yeah. and he, the, the, with the cell phone that apparently was held by a Khabib fan. Everyone's wondering what the hell's going on with that's that. Just, that's just hype. So, but what what is next for him? I mean, like, shouldn't he just go into a Guy Ritchie movie and just yes. end it right now? I think and he just should stop? get into movies. I'm serious. I agree with you. Do your whiskey, get into movies. Right. And uh, he's done it. He did it. He's proved everything to me. So he doesn't have to, you know, I, again, I think that he has accomplished what every fighter dreams of. What's difficult for these guys is when you've been identified as a fighter, when you love that competition, Mm -hmm. when you're an extreme winner like he is, it's very difficult to then transition and now go be a movie star or go do acting, which means wear makeup and make believe and wait around a lot. That's... That's not what it's cracked up to That's be. True. If people saw how <laughs> movies were made, if they, nobody would be interested in hanging out or learning about actors. Right. I'm telling you right now, you, you, you shoot a page a day. Enjoy that. Right. I don't care what, I've done all these movies. I've done big movies. I was just on The Joker. I mean, you know, whatever it might be, you're sitting yeah. around. You're, you're sitting around for your shot to come up. And then if you're not in the shot, you will be in the background, sir. All day long, mm-hmm. fake faking whatever it is you're doing, playing cards and action. <laughs> right. that, that's your day for 12 hours. Please enjoy. Right. Different way. With your downtime, you could figure out inventive ways to get your kids into school, right? You, you can do Thank you. <laughs> that, I can't. This is great. The only you have, thing. You've got a 10 and a 7, right? I got a 10 and a 7 year old. Uh-huh. Look, I understand, I understand the desperate need to protect right. your kids, get your kids ahead in life, but. <laughs> you can't cheat. You can't Photoshop your your daughter's head onto you know a cr- a, somebody. A crew. I mean, I come know. on, man. How these the, the extent of these lies? When you're in a web that big, you don't think you're going to get caught. You don't think that somebody's going to figure it out. This is what cracks me up about about people who try to pull off scams and crimes. You are a civilian. You make believe for a living. You're an actor or whatever you might be. And then you decide, let's just talk, like Jesse Smollett, whoever it is, you decide to step into the arena of crime. Now, what you don't realize is that when you decide to pull off a scam like that, you're taking on uh, the law enforcement agency of Chicago, of Massachusetts, of Los Angeles. Or in this is the case, or it's the United the, States. I was going to say, sir, the FBI. So it's, it's literally the equivalent of me going, you know what? I think I'm going to box at a high level. I'm going to get in there with the Anthony Joshua or, or I don't know, <laughs> just take your pick. Me and, me and Tyson Fury, I'm going to go and then I get knocked out and I'm surprised. That's literally what it is. You can't, you're not better at crime than, than the people that study that stuff. 
So, you know, they just kind of go, oh, look at this. Look at this amateur. Let me just connect the dots and uh, cuff that person over there. Yeah, and I, I, Brian Callen here on the Rich Eisen Show. You know, my wife and I have been, you know, talking about it for the last 24 hours. And you go back and forth, but obviously between you do anything, anybody would do anything for the kids. If you have means or not, you'll do anything yeah. for your kids. But I mean, I, I'm but don't was, cheat. I, I, you know, exactly. And because you do have to basically look your child in the face and say, I know you don't want to go to that school, but guess what? This is life. This is the way things go. Yeah, you should have. You, we were telling you to do better because, of course, it's the kid's fault. It's not your parents' of fault. Of course. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, I asked Chris Brockman this before. Like, what if you're the kid? And, and like, would how would you feel if, like, oh, by the way, that, that SAT you took? Yeah. Totally rigged. You didn't even know it. <laughs> I mean, how wow. do you come back from that? I don't know. Thanks for the example, Mom and Dad. Here, look. The bottom line is that we forget this. Uh, there was a constitutional uh, lawyer who had who broke down the way our society works, and it's very simple. Two two rules, three rules, really. Yes. Don't take what doesn't belong to you. Keep your promises. In other words, don't lie. Sure. And if you if you violate those two, figure out a way to make amends. Make it right. Mm -hmm. Justice is by the Greeks defined as everything in its place. Put it back in its place. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has moments, man. I mean, that's part of what my special is about. We all we all screw up. We're okay? a complicated age. We're complicated. I'm not a noun. I'm not a. I'm not a. You know, it, 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 I'm I'm a verb. I change. I'm, I take on the whole spectrum. Sinner and right. saint, and everything in between. Yes. I get it, man. We all screw up. But face the music, man. Make it right. And I think people forget that. Those simple things. And, you know, if you know, those are the things you learn right away as a kid. Don't take what doesn't belong to right. you and keep your promises. Brian Callen is comedy, dynamic, special, Write that down, America. Names. Write it down. Um, so let's return to, uh, to, to the octagon. What is the future for Cormier? He's like, it's Lesnar or nothing. The rest of the heavyweight division is saying, that's not cool. Let's go. Have well, you ever is... seen Daniel, like, in person? I have. He's been here, and he's a delight. I he's love a, he's uh, one of my favorite. He's, to me, the most impressive fighter to ever step in the octagon. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know. Take a look at him. When he's in a polo shirt, he comes to my shows sometimes when yeah. I'm in uh, San Jose. I've actually, I've actually sparred with him, which is this so insulting. But I got to get in there and move okay. around with him. Yeah. And he was, he was doing this, and then he picked me up and put his his shoulder into my chest, and I started producing estrogen, and then I, I, I started screaming. And, and that yeah, was a wrap. It's yeah, a wrap. I mean, I immediately, I actually embraced him, and then I, I, ended up, I think I cooked for him that night, and oh, I, I, I cleaned his floors. Wow. Now, either way, I, he, you do what Daniel tells you. Yes. But he's shorter than I am, and he looks, in a, in a shirt, he looks like, I don't know, I, I, my UPS guy isn't that far off. My UPS guy's a thick dude. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you wouldn't look at my UPS guy and go, that's the baddest guy on the planet. And Daniel Cormier's lost only twice to two guys. Right. I mean, to one guy, John, John Jones. Jones. Right. That's the only guy that has his number. Other than that, he is, he's incredible. Well, he would also say that he did not lose to John Jones either. <laughs> well, you know, that, because, that it wasn't a fair fight, he would say. Well, and, and, you know, maybe there's a case to be made there. But there's no one more impressive, no one, uh, than Daniel Cormier. I just so I've what is he going to do? Like is he gonna, is he going to wait for Lesnar or just not fight at all? I'd like him? to see him put a beating on Lesnar. I'd like to see that. I, mm -hmm. I, I want to see Daniel get paid. I want to see these guys get paid. I want to see Daniel sure. make ten million dollars and never have to worry. He's just a he's just a great human being. Yeah, he's you know? he's turning forty this week and he's dealing with a back injury because he sneezed. <laughs> which does not sound like uh, an octagon ready individual. It does sound like he he is he is a UPS driver. Yeah. With all you know. By the way, my UPS driver, he's rock solid. He's not DK <laughs> Metcalf. My UPS, he's my not UPS, DK. He's got abs. He's got a beautiful body. He's in between. He's somewhere in between Cormier and DK Metcalf, <laughs> who you were remarking about from the combine. I mean Metcalf. I want. If I looked like that, I would never wear clothes. I'd never. I'd wear. I'd walk around on a loincloth. Are you kidding me? Well, I mean, he's ridiculous. I'd just be running. I'd run through. I don't know. On on the beach, I'd just be. Oh, I'd always be in action or just posing. Yeah, my on air compadre Daniel Jeremiah sitting next to me said he's a human bat suit. Is what he called it. He's a human bat suit. Did. Why did I think of that? That's what he said. He's That's a funny. human bat suit. I, I've just never. When you see a man like that, like I look at him and I'm like, oh my god, I thought I was straight. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> did I say that out loud? You did. That Look, he's a beautiful human on. being. It's okay. All Not right, that there's anything fine. wrong with that. Yeah, what's this, uh, there a problem? So, uh, John Jones, best ever? Would you say he's the best ever? That's what's being discussed now that he's uh, he just came off the W here. I mean, you got to give it up to him. There's no, I mean, I've, he's just so creative. Mm -hmm. How do you solve that problem? I have no idea. I mean, mm -hmm. again, by the way, both his brothers are 
standouts in in an organization called the NFL, National Football yeah, yeah, League. Yeah. Yes. So you, I mean, just just when you play one down in the NFL, you're a better athlete than everybody within ten square miles. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, that, that's that's a fact. And his brothers, are, so that that gene pool. But he's Not bad. he's more than that. He's just he's a true fighter. He's so creative. His ability to just stay kind of relaxed and kind of, let's see what I do. Maybe I'll hit you with my elbow. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll hit you with a jab. Now I'm going to front kick you. Now I'm going to do a weird thing with my elbow. Uh, you know, he does these weird things. I mean, yeah. he's, you, can't, you can't game plan for John Jones. Is there any way we can get Cormier in the octagon with him one more time, you think? The only way I would like to see Cormier fight, I don't want to see Cormier fight John Jones again because I, I love Daniel Cormier and he has nothing to prove. But uh, if Daniel Cormier was healthy and he fought at um, heavyweight, mm -hmm. w what would Daniel Cormier do at 240? Because that's what he walks around at, I think. Sorry, Daniel, if, if you're <laughs> from a couple pounds off. DC. I, I know he's like, probably. Wait a minute. I know he's sensitive about I just about sneezed. His... <laughs> I'm in traction. What the hell's going on on the Rich Eisen show? I, I know he's sensitive about that. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, that, that would be the only thing I'd be. He's undefeated as a heavyweight. But, again, this is John Jones. John Jones makes mincemeat out of everybody. Out of everybody. It's not even a fight. Yeah. Has he finished everybody, I believe, except for Oven St. Pru? Yeah. Which was, you know, he was back and he was like, let me just, eh, I'll play around a little bit. So I don't know, man. I, I just don't see anybody beating him. All Cain right. Velasquez, when he was younger and healthy, that would have been a great fight. Uh, the Fighter and the Kid podcast. How's Brendan's uh, comedy career doing? He just shot his special. He's blowing up, isn't he? Yeah, dude. Well, the, the, again, this is a pro, the, this is pro athlete discipline. Brendan Shaw, in, yeah. In show business. Yeah. And he's just a grinder. He is a grinder. He's a grinder, dude. He's just one of those guys. He's so metro. He's so metro. He walks around. He spends a fortune on shoes and hair product and skin product and the whole thing. And I just, but he's, make no mistake, he'll beat up everybody in the room. Yes, he's he still, will. He's still a, an absolute gorilla. And, uh, <laughs> but it, it just cracks me up because he's, he's just a grinder and tough. We were, we did this stunt where we had to be on a horse and they were thinking about maybe we'll fall off the horse, but it's a horse. Yes. And he goes, well, why don't we just both get on it and then we'll just, the horse can gallop and we'll fall off. <laughs> and I go, <laughs> what? And he goes, yeah, we'll just go. I go, no, 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 that's a horse. And if it's going, we fall off. There's nowhere to fall. It's the ground. We get, yeah. we get thistles and also break my head. My bones <laughs> don't go well with ground from horse. And he goes, he goes, well, don't be such a pansy. What a baby. You're such a baby. And that's how he is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. So He's I'm not, uh, such a tough guy. Falling off a horse yeah. sounds terrible. Oh, my gosh. Yet, you think? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and he, he was mad at me because I didn't have, I was being a baby about falling off a galloping horse. Not a stuntman. Mm, comedian. All right? I look like an athlete. Sure. <laughs> nice. My shoulders go on for days, but still. Before I let you go, Brian Callen. Um, you and I have both been in a uh, the same show, not at the same time, but uh, on this show frequently, I uh, will open up on live broadcast my residual checks from CSI Miami. <laughs> I've appeared on two episodes of CSI Miami, yes. uh, one called Deep Freeze and one called Caged. Mm. Did I, 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 and I, I was male reporter in one. Is that what it was, Chris? Yeah, it's, host and male reporter. I was host I in one, male reporter in another. Nice. You, hold on a minute. You played Kent Ackerman. Don't remember. In a, Don't 20, remember. In a 2010 <laughs> episode called Getting Axed. According really? to IMDb, That's were you a, never on no, CSI Miami? No, I was Miami? on CSI, but I don't okay. remember these things. Okay. You know, so, I've done so much, everyone. So, so <laughs> my, I, my resume goes on for days. So I've got, I've got to ask you, Yeah. you know, how how big is your residual check from CSI Miami? You know, do you what, not dude, know because you get so many. I get residual so checks? many; it's so hard. I have my people. I've just oh. got. <laughs> well, when I open my vault, I get paid in gold now, wow. so I'm not sure. I would tell you to go stuff it in that horse you fell off of. Yeah, you know? I was going to say, but I don't fall off. So horses. you don't know what your horse. residual check is from CSI no, Miami? No, you know, you get a. You know, I've been doing this for 25 years, so I, oh, I do get a lot of residual checks. See, I only get. I only get a few. By the way, I got two more just yesterday. I'm going to bring them in tomorrow. Uh, nice. I assume it's on that. What are you getting? Because I, I got, I got, I got two residual checks from my appearance on the now defunct At Midnight on Comedy Central. I've done that show. I, the the residual checks were a grand total of two cents and three cents. <laughs> so I called. Now you can buy that stamp. That's sort of. I called my son over, my ten year old son over, and I'm like, you know. You want to go to college, right? This is just to bring it full circle. The conversations going on here in Los yeah. Angeles. You want to go for? I'm like, I got your college account right here. <laughs> right here. And I hand him the two checks, and he just looks at me. And he goes, "This is two cents, Dad. <laughs> do well, I do I cash that check? 
Uh, no, just hold on to it. Do frame I cash it, the two cent it? check? No, because you can say dad was an actor once. A professional <laughs> actor. Well, I wasn't you acting got... on At Midnight. I was myself. I wasn't, I was. Oh, but yeah, you were in true. CSI, so you were technically a professional actor. My, my, uh, my uh, on average residual check is anywhere between three cents and the whopping fine number recently of like 11 bucks. Well, let me tell you this. I did a little movie called The Hangover. Ever heard of it? <laughs> and Hangover 2, whatever. And a bunch of other stuff. doesn't matter. The point is this. Yes. I, 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 the first Hangover, we didn't know it was going to be a, a big movie. I think I got paid a grand, maybe two grand for the day. But then when the movie becomes a uh -huh. hit, you you know, that's your college fund. There you go. Yeah. So bottom line, or guys, the, I don't look at price tags. Okay. Or, or the USC water polo <laughs> fund, depending on what it is. Yeah, exactly. This is crazy. Uh, <laughs> BrianCallen.com with a Y slash live to get tickets to see Brian Callen live. The Fighter and the Kid podcast where all podcasts can be acquired. Complicated Ape stand-up specials available right now on over 20 different platforms, including DirecTV and AT&T. Good to oh, see man. you, sir. Thank you for having me, sir. No, thanks. Come back anytime, man. I love it. A lot it. of fun. Great conversation. Chair. Uh, is it? Because yes. we had them reupholstered recently. Uh, did you really? We for did. me? Leather? No, I mean, I mean for, for you and others. No, no, yes. no, I look good. I look good with a leather backdrop. There you go. And with leather on my legs and... And chest. That's because you're not DK Cal, DK uh, Metcalf. That's exactly at right. At Brian Callen on Twitter as well as Instagram. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.